If you really like this episode, please support our podcast by going to patreon.com slash true crime wives and get lots of great extras. Hey guys, it's Fancy, bringing you one of our exclusive Patreon member club mini podcasts. This episode will be live on our main podcast page to show you the type of exclusive episodes you get for supporting our podcast and joining our membership club. Tonight, I'm talking about Sam Little. Listen in to Sam describe his kills in shocking detail with a smile on his face and soothing voice. It's truly bone chilling. Hey guys, Fancy Maselli here from the Good Wives Guide to True Crime. And if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. We all like free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Sam Little is just your average 79-year-old looking man. A bit weathered in his wheelchair and knit beanie, but upon further investigation, you can see the man he was, a six foot 
free, imposing black man who could charm the pants off the ladies who would fall victim to his overly large hands. Sam was born in Reynolds, Georgia, but did a lot of his growing up in Ohio. And like many serial killers, his issues with women started young when his mom abandoned him on the side of a dirt road as an infant. Little was convicted in 2014 of the murders of three women in California between the years of 87 and 89, and one woman in Texas in 1994. He was apprehended in 2012 in a homeless shelter in Louis Louisville, Kentucky, and is serving his time in California State Prison. So how does a man convicted of only four murders get the term most prolific serial killer in U.S. history? because Sam Little is thought to have killed upwards of 90 women. And the way the FBI is linking him to these murders is extraordinary. Five years ago, analysts with the FBI's most violent crime apprehension program, Viacap, began linking cases to Sam Little. Eighteen months ago, a Texas ranger started convincing him to confess to outrageous amounts of murders. Little has confessed to 93 murders across 16 states. He began strangling prostitutes and homeless women in 1970, and continued into 2005. Because of the nature of his victims' lives, many were ruled overdoses or accidental or undetermined. Most went unidentified, and several bodies were never even found. Little thought for many years he'd never be caught because so many of his victims weren't accounted for. Sam was app apprehended in 2012 at a homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. He had had many run-ins with the law, but did not get convicted of murder until 2014. In fact, his first incarceration in Ohio for robbing a furniture store is where he learned to draw, which is interesting since the FBI is using his drawings to help identify these women. And now the FBI is asking for the public's help in identifying them. The chilling accounts he gives on the FBI.gov website will make your skin crawl. Little is drawing his victims from memory, and these drawings are just amazing. The details he puts into them is astounding and very accurate. And at 79, his memories of these women is unbelievable. Little describes each lady as if he's talking about the love of his life. He calls them angels, and he believes he was basically saving these women from the death they already had inside. In 1971 or 1972, he lovingly talks about meeting a transgender woman in Miami, Florida. He calls her Mary Ann, or Mary Ann. He spent several days with her after picking her up at a bar. He even met her roommates. After a couple of days, Little and Marianne were out running errands when he decided to kill her north of Highway 27 near a sugarcane field. He progressed a little further down the road, dragged her body 200 yards into thick swamp land, and left her. He doesn't think her body was ever found. Tell me about Mary Ann. Is she what you not a transgender. She's a black male dressed up as a female. Okay. How tall is, is she? Mary Ann about five, seven, seven, five, six. She weighed about one thirty five. Okay. One maybe one forty. And how old do you think she was? About, she was nineteen. Okay. And where was she from? No, I'm Miami, down in Liberty City. Okay. And did she, um, you mentioned before she had a boyfriend, or she talked about a boyfriend? Hey, Wes. Wes? Yeah. And, and tell me about where you met her at. I've seen her down at the Guar on 17th Avenue. 
She had on a short cream miniskirt. <coughs> Cream and red. So then this opportunity popped up mm -hmm. to take her to the store. Right. Instead of me bringing her back to the work department, I went to our 27th seat. That's going down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. called the gate of the Alligator Alley. It, it turns into, it runs into Alligator Alley. Right. But the further out you get, the further you get out of Miami, right. you, you, you got vegetation. Yeah. Now, how far outside of Miami? About it wasn't too far out of Miami right okay. there. I was in my stepdad's car, Pontiac Levans. And where did you take her to? Continue down 27. Mm -hmm. Got back on 27. Going outside of Miami. Okay. Miami. Going away from Miami. Going away from Miami. We got down past the, uh, past the, let's say, limits. So I continued on toward Fort Lauderdale. And I seen a road going off the main road back into vegetation on the left side. So I got her out of the car, pulled her out, and drug her into the growth back there. And pulled her deeper into the other path. A little path was running somewhere. I don't know where it led it to, but it running deeper into the undergrowth. It's like uh, Everglades like that. And we ran into uh, uh, some water running. And, but before we got to the water, the earth was mushy. I told her loose. And she fell into it face down. And how far outside of Miami do you think you were? About a mile, two miles. Uh, what year did Mary Ann occur? Uh, 72. Okay, 1972. Every great podcast needs a great website. Currently, our mother company, Mad Ginger Entertainment, is building their website using Bluehost. Bluehost is one of the best and most affordable web hosting platforms available. Plans start as low as $2.95 a month, and you can even integrate it with WordPress. So if you need your own website or affordable web hosting, Grab our discount link in the description and get your podcast a bigger presence online at low, low costs. Originally, news reports said he had no victims in Kentucky, but he does claim one in Covington, Kentucky in 1984 which has yet to be matched to a victim. But she was really from Ohio, so that might be why. Little said he was driving his Lincoln from Lorraine, Ohio to Cincy, Cincinnati. He met a 25-year-old white female outside a strip club. He describes her as a hippie type. He says she even asked him for a ride to Miami to visit her mother. After spending time together in downtown Cincinnati, they crossed over to Kentucky where he drove up a small dirt road and strangled the woman. And he left her body on top of a little hill. Hey, tell me about um, Northern Kentucky, the girl that you met in Columbus. So you meet this girl, I guess you're at a strip bar downtown Columbus. I went on my car, and uh, this white girl come out behind the building. And I'm in my trunk. Up. She walked over to me, say, uh, can I come on, y'all, can you take me to Miami? Describe this girl to me. Is she white, black, what she look like? She was white, blonde hair, dishwater, dishwater blonde, they go. Short. Short, like shoulder length? Yeah, or? No, 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 early, a little over the early. Like a bomb. Yeah, like a bomb. Okay. And um, how tall do you think she was? She was about five, seven. How much did she weighs? She weighed about 130. How old do you think she was? Oh, she was about 25. Okay. You mentioned before that, that uh, you said she kind of had like this hippie aura to her. Yeah, she did give you a hippie feeling. I think she was some kind of hippie, yeah. 
So you go to Cincinnati, you mess around on Vine Street, and then eventually you guys both get in your car and you cross over the, the bridge into Kentucky. Tell me about going into Kentucky. We got to Covington and then we continued through Covington. Mm -hmm. And there was a park that they were having a festival there. And she heard the music and she off the band in there. And by her being a hippie type, you know, she wore she get to that. But the police came over and peeped in, in our car. He really wanted me to move out of there. So we, instead of going in there, I took her the other way. Right. Around, winding around. They got hills out in Kentucky and the road winds around the hills. I seen a little short road going up mm -hmm. the hill. Mm -hmm. and, and up top there was uh, vegetation. Wasn't no houses or nothing. And so I pulled up in the, in, in concealed by the car, in, the, in that little vegetation up there on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this this road that goes up the hill. What kind of road is it? It was it was like a dirt road. Okay. It was like dirt. The grass was growing in the middle between two tracks. When I left her up in the, in that little road up there, on the side of the road, she was like partially concealed. By vegetation, I left for that. To learn more about Little and to hear his chilling confessions in their entirety, visit FBI.gov. The exact link will be in our description. Thanks so much for tuning in and dishing true crime with the good wives. Don't forget to join our Patreon member club to get more of these exclusive mini episodes. Inside documents and pictures from the case, live YouTube discussions, our exclusive discussion group on Facebook, and get some amazing Good Wives merch. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at True Crime Wives. And for more inside information, check us out on YouTube at Murder by Design, where we're currently hosting our series on Moms Who Kill. Have a good one from the Good Wives, serving up true crime one dish at a time.